Okay, Alice, could you confirm with me if it's shown that it started recording? Yes, it has. Okay, that's good. Okay, let me just see if I can put my PowerPoint presentation up. Okay, are you all able to see my screen? Yeah. Yes, we can see the screen. All right, okay, that's good. But nothing yet. Come again? Like you can just see the screen, the full screen, but nothing on it. Nothing on it yet. I okay. can see. You can see the screen? Yeah. Yeah, zero, zero, something like that. No, no, it's it's written how how to yes, become a microsoft. Oh, I think it's still loading for some of us. Okay. Uh, yeah, for some of us, yeah. Here, same here, it's still loading. Okay, then we can wait a bit to be just com kindly confirm when it started showing in your screen. Doctor, all right, sure. Okay, do we have somebody from the University of Zambia in the meeting apart from Jackson? Uh, yes, yes, I'm there. Okay, that's good. Yes, yeah. Um, okay, do we have uh, somebody from the Copper Belt University in the meeting? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes yeah, I'm here. Okay. Mm, any other university? You can just maybe unmute your mic and maybe just say which university you're coming from. Hmm. Okay, Roman Macharie from Levy Monasa Medical University. Okay. Um, hello. So, Joseph Mukesi, Cavendish University. Okay, Cavendish. Daniel Koma, Levy Monasa Medical University. Okay, that's nice. Any other university? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm coming from Aarhus University in Denmark. Okay, nice to have you. <laughs> Welcome. Any other university? And then could you guys just kindly confirm with the screen? Yeah, the screen is, uh, is, is still the same. Okay, like the people yes, that were. Still, the same. still loading. Still loading. Still loading, yes. Okay. Okay. okay, maybe as we wait to to see the screen, could I just see if I can move to the next slide and then the people that are waiting to confirm on the slides, just confirm if it's going to load, if that's okay. Since we're waiting for the first slide to load. No phone anymore. I'm Here's one. Are you able to see the screen? Yes, I am able to see the screen on my okay. end. Okay, who else is not able to see their screen? Uh, I am unable to see the screen. It's still loading. It's still loading. Yeah. It's still loading here. Okay. Mm, is it possible that maybe you could just try to rejoin if it's okay? All right. Yeah. Then we'll see maybe if the screen is going to load or not. I think so, a little bit, yeah. Okay, so I think we can just give them maybe a minute or so for them to rejoin, then we can get started because we've been waiting for some time now. Mm, it's fine. Okay. <laughs>
So now I think there's just a white, just white plane. There's nothing. Oh, okay. We can, I can see it now here. Okay, that's good. Uh, so they'll try to rejoin again. Now it's working. Yeah, it's working now. Okay, so just kindly confirm everybody. You were able to see the screen? Yes, yes. I'm able to see it. Okay. What's the, is it playing? Yes, I can see it. Okay. Can you kind of move to the next slide to see if others would be able to see the previous one? Okay, that's okay. So this will be our next slide. Can you see the agenda with them? Yeah, I can see that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, you can see the first slide? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, we can see it. Okay, Jackson, are you yes. here? Yeah. You said what? I'm trying to find out if Jackson is in the meeting. Ah, okay. Mm. Seems like he's not in the meeting. Okay, so I think we can get started. Um, my name is uh, Alina Senyurinda. Okay, um, I, can, I can see the screen now. You can see the screen, okay. I'm just checking again. Jackson, are you in the meeting? Seems he's not. Okay, so my name is uh, Lina Senyurinda and I'm a student at the University of Zambia. I'm in my final year. I'm pursuing my bachelor's in information, communication technology, and the school of education. And I'm currently a Microsoft student ambassador and I'm at the alpha stage. So the reason why I've been trying to call out Jackson, he was the first Microsoft student ambassador for Zambia. I thought uh, we could just have him say something before we get into the meeting, but it seems he's not here. Do we have any other Microsoft student ambassador in the meeting right now, apart from Jackson? Okay. Come again. I'm here. Okay, you can just introduce yourself. All right, uh, my name is uh, Moses Manakola. I'm a third year student at the University of Zambia, currently pursuing software engineering with my major. Yeah, I'm locally Microsoft Student Ambassador. Okay, thank you. And then <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't get his program. What program is he doing? Software engineering. From from the invest of Zambia. Okay. All right. So we'll get into the agenda for this meeting that we're having. We're going to look at the eligibility, like who's uh, who's permitted to apply for this program. And then we'll also look at the process and how to become a Microsoft Student Ambassador. 
then we'll talk about if you get selected in the program, what happens next. Thereafter, we'll look at the learning paths. For example, if you're interested in doing software engineering, when you become a student Microsoft ambassador, what really happens? Um, how best can you learn and implement this program that you're trying to pursue for becoming a software engineer? And then we'll look at the milestones that are involved in this program, like the different stages when you apply and you get accepted at the first stage and the second stage is how far and the other stages that follow. Then we have questions. After questions, we'll do the introduction to web development. After web development, we're going to talk about how the web works, like the website works and the internet and other things that happens behind the scenes web development. Then we'll also talk about the types of websites that exist. And we'll also do just a little bit of programming, what programming is, is all about and what's involved in programming. Then we'll also watch a video on just the basics of HTML. And thereafter, we'll have questions. So I'm kindly requesting, if I move to the next slide and you're not clear, you can easily just stop me along the way. And I can see Jackson is in the meeting. Jackson, we were, I, I told everybody that you're the first Microsoft student ambassador for Zambia. So we're just hoping that maybe you could say something before we get into the presentation. Uh, Jackson. Okay. Yes, Ali. Yeah, we were just hoping that maybe we could hear a few words from you, you being the first Microsoft student ambassador for Zambia. Okay, thank you so very much. I, I had network uh, difficulties, but at least I think I'm back now. Okay. Yeah, um, so I'm, I'm, I'm so glad to be part of this event. And, you know, the Microsoft Learn Student Ambassadors program has really been, you know, helpful to me and the community as well. And I'm glad for Zambia now, I think we have about five ambassadors so far this year. So it's really a wonderful, uh, wonderful experience. And I'm hoping uh, uh, most people that are here will take the opportunity through the guidance that Alina will give to also apply and make impact in their respective communities. Otherwise, this, this is a very, very good event and I'm sure every one of us will enjoy. Yeah, otherwise, thank you so much. Okay, Jackson, thank you very much as well for being part of this event. Thank you. Okay. So, the program who's who's able to apply for this program so when you're applying for the microsoft student ambassador you have to be at least 18 years old at the time of application and you have to be a student like currently enrolled at a college or a university and you have to have a valid identification from the university you're claiming here from and the good part about being a microsoft student ambassador you don't really necessarily have to be um, a, a student that is doing maybe IT, you might be doing a medical program and you just want to learn more about ICTs, you can easily apply for this program. And it doesn't matter whether you're in first year or you're in your final year or you're doing your master's, you can also just apply as long as you're a student and you have the passion for technology. Okay, so... There's a link here. I don't know if you're all able to see the link on my next slide. Could someone confirm? I'm able to see it. Yes, from my hand, I can be able to see the, the link. Okay. So what happens is this, when you go to the website for the Microsoft Student and Ambassador and you're able to see this is the first screen that pops up when you're trying to apply. 
And then after, I will share the slides when the presentation is done with everybody in my email. So you'll be able to access these slides. So the first thing that happens is you have to create a Microsoft account or you can use your Gmail account to sign in when you're trying to apply. And uh, let me just see. Hmm. Sorry, I can't see my fake slide. Okay, so after after you've created your, your Microsoft account, uh, you've used your Gmail, you're able to verify that via email and you'll be re re redirected back to the same page. You'll be able to see this page then there after clicking on apply. You'll be able to see this like on your personal, personal information. You have to put in like your full names, your surnames and um, the very same email that you used when applying you can easily just fill it up there. And then you, you select the country that you're applying from, as well as the, pre, uh, the province will pop up as well and the date of birth. And after filling in that information, you'll be able to fill in your academic uh, information, just verifying that you're a student and what university you're applying from. And you're expected to put in the expected uh, debt for graduation. I feel like this is just used to track when somebody gets enrolled in the program and when they'll be graduating. And then also you have to put in the type of degree you're pursuing. It doesn't really matter whether you're doing ICT or you're doing a teaching program or a medical program, you can still apply to become a Microsoft Student Ambassador. Then you also have to put in your URLs for social media. For example, okay, sorry about that. Yeah, so uh, if you have um, a social media account, for example, if you're on Instagram, if you're on Twitter or you're on LinkedIn, with this application, you'll be required to paste in a URL. And with the URL, it's just the address of the web page. I've put in the examples here. I don't know if you can see the examples here of my Twitter and LinkedIn. Could someone confirm? Yeah, we can see them. Yes. Yeah, they're yes. clear. Yeah. OK, so you'll be able to just copy that. Uh, if you're using maybe your phone or your laptop to apply, you can easily just copy and paste them. And um, a few things to keep in mind when you're applying for this program. So currently, uh, applications are running and the deadline will be on the 31st for the January enrollment session. So if you're really interested in applying for this program, I'll share the slides and then you'll be able to to run through the application process. It doesn't really take much long and you'll be accepted within, I think about four months. For me, I applied earlier in April, then I got enrolled uh, last month. So with this process, I'm not really sure on how they're going about the August, October session, but I feel like it's been shortened and it's a privilege to just apply and get to interact with people Better into IT and just learn more with what other student ambassadors are doing. And there's a there's a question where you might be able to film a video explaining why you want to become a Microsoft student ambassador. You can upload it on YouTube or you can upload it in your Google Drive to share that. And then the good part about the uh, application process is that immediately you've started filling it in, you've created your email and uh, you've started the process, you can easily, for example, if you're, you're not really sure what you're supposed to put in or you're trying to copy in your URL from maybe LinkedIn or um, Instagram, you're able to just go back and forth and your application will be automatically saved. Like you just find it once you just log in. And we're going to talk about what happens next once you're accepted in the Microsoft Student Ambassador Program. 
which is the most exciting part for me, I think. <laughs> yeah, after being accepted in the program, you're going to receive this email from Microsoft saying you've been accepted in the program and you're going to be given a student portal where you can access all the information about the program and platforms that you're supposed to, to join. So uh, these Microsoft Teams, the same platform that we're using, that the different channels that are there, the channels for women in tech that are currently working for Microsoft and you just get to interact with them and learn on how they're managing to be in the industry. And then also there are communities where you have project um, program managers, for example, in the Africa region and these other continents, you're able to find out from them what's supposed to be done in the program once you've been accepted, just uh, other communities for ambassadors as well. You get to interact with them and find out how they're doing and how they're hosting events, how they're learning, and it's quite interesting, I would say. And then you also get to have um, an uh, uh, what's this, Outlook, where you have a personal email from Google, I mean, from Microsoft, they'll automatically send you one and you'll be able to receive all the updates on the Outlook email. So you can choose, you'll be given an option to choose whether you'd want to stick to the email that you use the time you're applying for the program, the Gmail or the Outlook, you can either use one of the two to get updates and notifications on the program. Okay, so uh, once you get enrolled, you have a wide variety of resources through Microsoft Learn. So if you're interested in doing, I don't know, like you're interested in becoming a developer, you're interested in doing um, business and many, many other options that you have. If you want to do databases or you want to become a support engineer or you are you're trying to learn about network engineering, the different career paths that you can choose looking at the fact that IT is broad, you just have to specialize as an individual, know your strengths. If you want to become a software engineer, you have all the learning paths to that. And the good part is you don't necessarily have to be an expert to join the community. You can start from a beginner's level, you can be intermediate, you can be advanced. The learning paths are all user friendly. All you just have to do is be willing and join the community and start learning and hearing what others are doing and see how best you can fit in in the program. But just to me, the program is very user friendly and it's just amazing that you get to learn a lot of things from Microsoft Learn and you have a lot of wide range of resources freely for you once you become a Microsoft Student Ambassador. So I'd advise that you guys get to apply for this program. It's really interesting. And the milestones that are involved in this program are Alpha, Beta, and God. I've put in a link. I don't know if you guys can see the link down there. Visit the link here to learn more. Could someone confirm? Yes, yes, we can. Okay. Well, I can see that. All right, that's good. So you'll be able to just click on that. They need to take you on the milestones that are involved in the program and you can get to learn more. So once you get accepted, you have to take a learning path on the, on the previous slide that I had shown. And this one, you have a lot of wide range of resources that you're going to learn. So you can pick one milestone that you, one learning path that you'd want to take and after that, you'll be upgraded to Alpha. And it's really good that you get to learn exactly what you want, not that you have to take several courses, but you can just specialize on what you want to do as an individual. OK, um, just trying to find out if there are any questions about the application process and many other things that we've talked about that you haven't understood. Hello, can you guys get me? Alina, yes, can you get me? Good. Yes, this is uh, 
Are you receiving questions? Yes, I'm receiving questions about the application process on what I've just okay. talked about so far. Okay, so my question was is on the mm -hmm. benefits. Yeah, on the benefits, yes. Yeah, so those programs that you are selecting, um, are you given a certain qualification after that program? Yes, you actually get to... Okay, so the different stages that you have to move on after you've taken the, le the first learning path, and then you'll be given a voucher to attend any type of certification you want, and there are levels on which you can attend them. After you've migrated, for example, from Alpha to Beta to God, you'd be given free wide resources that you can get certified in. I don't know if I've answered your question. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I've got a question. Yeah, sure. Um, in the time you applied, how many of you applied, and then how many were accepted for this program? Uh, I think I'm not really sure with how many people applied, but I'm sure that we got. Uh, I mean, 800 people were selected from the January intake. I mean, July intake that I got admitted in. I'm not sure okay. on the number, but I'm sure that we are 800. Think 800 countrywide or? Uh, no, no, global. So there are lots of other Microsoft student ambassadors in different countries who apply for this same program. And they also go through the same process and they, they get accepted as well. I don't know if I've answered your question. Yes, you have. OK, so please do apply. <laughs> That we can have more Zambians in this program, right? <laughs> okay, any other question? Okay, we everything is clear, no question, guys. Okay, seems like we don't have a question. <laughs> I have a question. Okay, sure. So this program is only available for students, right? Yes, it's only available for students. Was my question clear? Yes, it was. It's only available for students. All right, thank you. Okay. And it can be any students, as long as they are enrolled at a specific university. Okay, any question? I didn't answer the question. Yeah, sure. Yes, uh, on the application, Mm -hmm. Does it require for a student, even a new student like first years, can first years apply as well, or yes, you have to be either second year or third year? No, first years can apply for the program. Doesn't really have to be somebody who's in their final year or third year, and anybody can apply for this program as long as they're enrolled at a university and they've got a valid ID. For example, if you've got an ID or a confirmation slip or something with a stamp from the university saying that you're a student from that university. Okay. So anybody can really apply for this program as long as they're a student. Okay. All right, yeah. thank you. Very right, sure. I also have a question. Yeah, sure. Uh, is this program only eligible for those doing degrees or it's also eligible for those doing diplomas? It's also, it's like for everyone, you don't really have to do a degree program as long as you're just a student at any college or university, you can apply. Okay, so what happens when you're filling in the application that way it says the degree thing and the not and the like, you just put in the diploma thing? Yes. I should think right. there should be a selection there. 
when you bring it when they drop down. Okay. Yeah. If you're having issues with that, we can still work around it and see how we can apply. All right, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, any other question? Hello, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I never attended uh, the first part of the meeting. So, uh, from the title of this program, mm -hmm. uh, I get two things. So, uh, maybe you talked about it uh, when the meeting had started. Yeah. Uh, but uh, just let me ask this question: uh, mm -hmm. what, What's this program all about? And. Uh, because on the title of the program, I also mm -hmm. saw introduction to web development. Yes. So after that question, what's the program about? The whole program about? Uh, who is it for? OK, so this program is for students that are interested in becoming Microsoft Student Ambassadors. And the first session is just about how to apply to become a Microsoft Student Ambassador, who's eligible to apply, should they be in first year? Should they be doing their masters? Everybody can easily apply for this program. That's the first part that we're at. We haven't really come to the part where we talk about web development. So we're currently in the question. Just see if people have understood on how to apply for this program. I don't know if I've answered your question. OK. Uh, yeah, you, can you still hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. My question is, uh, what does it mean to be a Microsoft? Uh, is it a student ambassador? Yes, a student uh, ambassador. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What does that mean? When, okay. I'm yeah. going to explain what, what it from my side on how I've understood it. So you become an ambassador, more like a brand representative for Microsoft, and you start taking learning paths on your interest. For example, sorry, your name is Chipo, right? Yes, I'm Chipo. Yes, Chipo. Say, Chipo, you're interested in becoming a web developer, right? And you don't have, um, yeah. what would I say? Uh, okay, let me try to put this in. Okay. Chipo, you're studying maybe medicine, right? And you want to learn more on how to develop a website or maybe make an app. But then you're just limited to certain type of resources and you don't have full access on how to develop an app or build a website. So this is where Microsoft Student Ambassador Learn Program comes in. You're given free resources that can help you on how to develop a website or an app, you being a medical student. And the good part is that you have a community of people that are enrolled in the same program who are developing apps, who are building websites, who want to become data science, you can easily interact with them and share resources and see how best you can up your skills as an individual. I don't know if I've answered your question. So as you begin, there are different milestones that you get to go through as you are learning from the process and what you want to become. With Alpha, you get a lot of benefits. For example, if you want to build a website, you are given a free domain for a year, and you can easily build a personal website with that, and you can brand yourself. And then also there are other advantages on the Alpha stage, and you get to have a free... There's a part that will come at in the next slides. I'll talk about that. Um, and the alpha parts, like what really happens, you get a free text editor and many, many, many other advantages. You actually get a Google, a Google, I mean, a Microsoft kit of a t-shirt and other things that you receive from Microsoft. And you actually get a certificate at the end of the day. You can easily apply for a job that you, you've been learning on and you can really empower yourself with this program away from being a student at any other university. But with this certificate, I mean, you can apply for a job at Microsoft at the end of the program. So it's just up to your intentions 
on why you're going to apply for this program and what you're to achieve. So I don't know if I've answered your question, Chipo. Yeah, part of it, but yeah, uh, yeah, you have. Okay, I hope it's clear. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hey Ali. Hello. That's yes, Jackson, right? Yes. Okay. Um, just, just to add on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So okay. again, as 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 an ambassador, uh, I think we've uh, we've dwelled uh, much on the benefits of an ambassador themselves. Mm -hmm. But I think it's also important to realize that once you're empowered through all those uh, things that uh, Linas has talked about. It's now left up to you to empower others as well. Yeah. So you as chief, yeah. after learning your web development, like Ali is doing now, she's sharing the the knowledge that she has received through the same program. She's sharing it with others. That way, we are empowering other students as well to empower others. So it's it's much more about making impact in someone's community. So of yeah. course, the benefits yeah. for you as an ambassador are a lot, too much, in fact. Mm -hmm. But then it also goes back to what you are able to give back to the community since you've been empowered by Microsoft as an ambassador. But then what are you able to give back to the community? So I think that's also an important uh, part that we should you know, consider. So it's about also giving and empowering others. Sure. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Jackson. Yeah, so. I don't know, Chipo, if that's clear. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's clear. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, right, thank you. I've seen a hand, Muila. I don't know if you want to say something. Are you able to get me? Uh, yes. Okay, yeah, so in response to Chipo's question, uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to talk about the advantages of taking such uh, such programs. So, for example, you mentioned to say at the end of the year you are, you get certificates or certification for the for the same program. Those yes. certificates are are very important in most of these top uh, and private organizations. Uh, besides, mm -hmm. you have in. Uh, a degree, for example, in information technology, software engineering, or ICT. Those certifications they add uh, they add the value to your to you to your CV, because uh, most of the time you deal with practical practical assignments and yeah, you, it's mostly hands on. So in, they recognize it most in most of these private and big companies. So I think I feel it's it's good for us to 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 sign up and. In the program. Yeah, that's very true. So I don't right, know. Uh, I got that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I don't know if we have some more questions. Okay, so. So we can move on. No question. I don't know if it's clear for everyone. OK. So we're going to talk about web development now that we've uh, learned on how to apply for this program and for me, I'm a web developer. I've been developing websites for some time. So I thought of combining this session with the introductory part of becoming Microsoft Student Ambassador and just a little bit on how the web works. I'm pretty sure everyone is on Facebook. Who's who's on Facebook in here? I'm on Facebook personally. You don't know who's on Facebook, guys? I I am. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so Facebook is um, it's a social networking platform. It's a website and it also has a web application that we're able to download on Play Store depending on what phone we're using. So 
what happens is it's when you visit a website, the web server hosting the site can be reached anywhere in the world. It doesn't necessarily have to be in Zambia, it can be in China, it can be in any country, depending on the host for that website. So the advantage of being a Microsoft student ambassador, you're given a domain, and with that domain, you're able to build a personal website. For example, I would say maybe alinasenyurinda.com and I would build that website. I would use that website for applying for a job or I'm trying to talk to somebody about the services I offer or what I'm currently doing as an individual. Given that package, I would brand myself on that website and then just showcase what I'm doing as an individual. And the good part about um, having a website, it's you're easily found and you're easily located by people and what services you're offering. So there are different types of browsers. Earlier in the WhatsApp group, uh, somebody posted asking on how we're going to access the, this meeting. For me, I'm using a laptop, so meaning I'm using um, I'm using the Microsoft Teams on the URL on a Google Chrome browser. So you can access websites on any type of um, browser. It can be Microsoft Internet Explorer, it can be Opera, it can be Mozilla. It just depends on what browser you're using as, as an individual. And then these web browsers are built. They're coded and they're called software applications and anybody can view them from any point. Uh, it doesn't matter whether they're using a tablet, they're using a PC, or they're using a phone. And what happens is this, when you're trying to access um, something on the internet, for example, if you've searched on how to become a Microsoft Student Ambassador, that information is going to be retrieved from a server, and you have to go through the same web browser for it to appear on your phone and just read more on what you're trying to access on the internet. So the different types of uh, websites, like the Facebook website, it's called the social, social media platform where you just interact with people. Doesn't matter whether they're in Lusaka, whether they're in Solozi, you can really have access to anybody on the social media platform. And uh, most of us in here are students, I believe, and we have uh, Moodle. Moodle is an educational learning platform and we're able to access our assignment and submit, I mean, for writing a test online, whatever information we've been given by our specific institutions, that is called uh, a website and it also has a web application that we're able to access on our phone. And the other thing is you're able to pay maybe for your tuition fees online. If you're using Zanaco or any other platform, FNB, those guys use um, a domain that you're able to use and then you can pay for, for your tuition fees or whatever service you're trying to purchase. Maybe you're ordering something on eBay, you're able to make online payments. And then the good part is if you are a student, you're trying to look for a job, you can use Go Zambia, Go Zambia Jobs which is uh, job broad, you're able, with that uh, website, you're able to find a job in whatever location you want to migrate to, I would say. If you are in Kitwe, you're trying to look for a job in Lusaka, you can easily just go to the website. So these types of websites that exist, I feel like they make our lives easier. And if you can learn on how to maybe build these applications or build uh, web apps or websites, I feel like it would make our lives easier. If you're trying to buy tomatoes, you can move from town. If somebody has developed an app or a website, you're able to just purchase and maybe Ulendo can deliver. So we should learn on how to build these websites. So it would make our lives easier. <laughs> And then what's involved in programming? Programming is also known as coding. It's the process of writing instructions to a device such as a computer or a mobile phone. So you can easily code using your phone and you can code using your computer. It doesn't necessarily mean that when you're learning programming, you just have to have a computer. You can even learn how, how to code using your uh, textbook or something and then you just copy the code using a text editor, which we talk about, and run the code 
I think that really works. And then write these instructions by using a programming language and the different types of programming languages to build uh, websites. And a program can be anything that is written with code. For example, programs that run on different devices are websites, games, and phone apps. So front-end languages in web development is what's called HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So HTML is, um, I'll show you guys a video that I had made in the next slide and what HTML is all about. And it's just all about the structure of the website and CSS just brings in the style. And if you're filling a form, if you're trying to get, like, okay, yeah. So if you're trying to fill in a form or maybe get information on another website you can easily use an api and you can integrate that api using javascript and websites easily interact with each other there are um, uh, different links that are there so these are the front end languages in web development and uh code editors for web development. There are different types of code editors that you can use. You can use brackets, you can use Notepad++, you can use Sublime, or any other free package that you can access. And the good part about being a Microsoft Student Ambassador is that you get a VS code for free, and you can use that platform on learning on how to build a website, like a full website, you also get to learn about back end and front end. It all depends on your passion and what you want to learn as an individual, the different resources. So if you're interested in learning web development or building applications or softwares, you can easily use this package. Okay, so I'm just gonna play a video that I had recorded. So you just kindly confirm with me if you'll be able to get the audio. Hello everyone. So in this video, I just used Notepad. As you can easily access it on your PC, you don't really have to download it. It's already been installed for you. So I used the, the body header and paragraph and just the the basic HTML to say hello everyone and thank you for taking part in the event. So in the next session that we're going to have, we're going to learn more on um, JavaScript, CSS, and more of HTML and it will be a hands-on session. So I encourage everyone of you to sign up for our next session, which will be in September and I'll keep you guys posted. And so guys, when you're free, you can actually go through this video and let's try to see if you can also write a bit of maybe say in the world in HTML. And if you're having problems with that, you can easily communicate through the ones that are and after having written a code in HTML using Notepad, make sure you save the document as dot HTML at the end, and then you have to save it. Then make sure that you have it there maybe in the desktop or in a folder to be able to run it. And that's the result we got for the demo. Thank you. Okay. So uh, HTML is a hypertext markup language and it uh, it's a web browser language and with HTML, it's just more like for appearance on the structural content that you're trying to build for your website. So that's it about the introduction to web development. If there are any questions, feel free to ask. Hello, are you guys there? Oh, there's a hand from Jeremiah. Yes, Jeremiah. Hmm. 
Mm. Any questions from anybody? Hello, it's not really a question. Um, just want to appreciate your presentation. Also, making sure that you don't forget to just send the, the, the slides. I dropped off at some point, so please uh, kindly share the slides. Thank you. No problem. I'll definitely share the slides with everyone. Okay, any question from anyone? Okay, seems like we don't have any questions. This is the end of our meeting. And this is what I thought of sharing with you guys. Um, the other hand is still still raised. I don't know for Jeremiah. There's a hand? I'm sorry. Okay, the person with the question, you can go ahead. And ask. Hi there. Um, Hello. Yes, we can get you. Is it Musole? Hello, can you guys hear me? Okay, there is a hand uh, from Jeremiah and Musole, so I don't know if there are any questions, but this is the end of our meeting. Oh, sorry, I forgot to unmute myself, so I was talking to, to myself. Okay, no, 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 it's okay. So I was asking about the mm -hmm. the video you're supposed to make when you're applying. How long is it supposed to be? Okay, so I made some videos the time I was applying. I think I can share those with you guys if you don't mind. All right, that would be great, actually. Yeah, I hope that will be helpful. <laughs> Thank you. That's all for me. Down. Okay. So my yeah, sorry, Jeremiah. We can I can't hear the person we can get you. We don't know about the others. Sorry, the network is not uh, it's not very well here. Uh, so my yeah, question I understand. The bit is developed. Oh no, sorry, we can't get you. Yeah. Then uh, the responsibility, the responsibilities of a uh, of some food website. But the main responsibilities of what? The web developer. Mm-hmm. What are the main responsibilities of a web developer? OK, um, the main responsibilities of a web developer. For me, I'd say before you even become a web developer, you have to understand the programming languages that are involved in um, developing something. And you have to know the end goal of what you're trying to develop. For example, if you're trying to develop a website where, like an e-commerce website where people can purchase something online, like eBay, you have to know exactly how it's supposed to be designed and you have to follow protocol, I would say, of that project that you're working on. Because you wouldn't really know the responsibility, per se, of everything, but you have to know exactly on what project you're working on and how you can go about it, what's involved, and should it have a back end? Should people be logging in on that website? Should be should it be a static website where people just go to the website and just find information? Or should it be a dynamic website where content has to be updated frequently? 
like the UNSA website where you're applying for school and they're having events, that's more like a dynamic website. And as a developer, you have to know exactly what type of website you're building or developing. So it all depends with what project you're working on, then you'll be able to know the responsibilities that should be handed over, I mean, for your client or as an individual. I don't know if I answered your question. Yeah, yeah. so it's all dependent on the project that you, you're handling. Yeah, uh, yes. Okay, thanks. Okay, welcome. Uh, Madam Marina, I also have a question. Yes, sure. Yes, I, I think it's just a follow-up follow question. Okay. Uh, from the, from the previous uh, speaker. Okay. It's about web uh, development. Mm -hmm. uh, my question is uh, out there nowadays, mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, somebody should start from ground zero coding for, uh, yeah. in case you want, you want to develop a, a website, mm -hmm. uh, something like that. Now, yeah. uh, from your end, yes. can you kindly state the advantages? If at mm -hmm. all they are there and the disadvantages of uh, thinking of coming up with a website that mm -hmm. has already been created, uh, yeah. maybe if there's template or anything, are there any advantages and disadvantages as to compare, mm -hmm. uh, as to compare uh, with uh, something that you should start from ground zero? Are there any advantages and disadvantages that you can point out? And uh, specifically say, okay, these, yes, they are there, and this, not. Thank you. Okay, yeah, sure. Okay, so I'm going to answer that question in this manner. So there are lots of online templates that you can use. But the thing, okay, from my experience, what I've noticed, there are a lot of plugins that you can use. You're using WordPress, if you're using Google Sites, there are a lot of resources that you can use. But be mindful that those things are being managed by other developers. So once the, once the plugin has been updated and you have uh, a live website, mm, what example would I use? Okay, you got a template from WordPress, right? And the plugin and the entire site is up and running for your client. For example, if you have an e-commerce website and you didn't call that website. So there's another developer who coded that website. So if need be, from that developer's perspective, they're trying to upload uh, new content on the features and you as an individual or for example, as a company, you're just using those plugins. Once they are updated, I feel like you'd be disadvantaged somehow when it's been upgraded, whether you're using a child theme or whatever theme you're using, you won't really be able to navigate it through because it's been updated and you have to start from scratch. Sometimes your site might even crash, but then, and then those services that you have to pay for plugins and then you agree with whatever platform you're using. So it all depends on what you're trying to achieve as an individual. But if you've learned coding from scratch and you're trying to apply, for example, for a job at Microsoft and you want to become a web developer or some different type of developer, app developer, and you've learned the code from scratch, it would be much easier for you as an individual to get the job because you'll be able to know what syntax should be there. You have learned the code as an individual. But anyway, it's like a two-way thing, depending on what you're trying to achieve as an individual. Disadvantages and advantages are there, but it depends on how you're going to tackle the project as an individual. I answered your question. Thank you. You have. You have. Mm -hmm. I can see there are three hands. We don't know who's going first. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh okay. Uh I think uh, part of this meeting, the uh, already other people that are familiar with uh, 
uh, some some few things that uh, you're going to look at. For instance, uh, web development. So mm -hmm. uh, my question is, uh, uh, would they have to uh, go through the same things that they already learned, or you'll be showing us uh, something different? Showing them something okay. different, or perhaps they have to take a different pathway. Yeah, or something like that. Okay, so uh, sorry, the Chipo was talking, right? Yeah, Chipo. Okay, so Chipo, you're asking based on the Microsoft line, you didn't advance the program or on the next session that we're supposed to have? Uh, sorry, can you repeat your question? Yes, I'm trying to understand your question. Are you asking based on the Microsoft Learning Student Ambassador Program or in the next session that we're supposed to have? Uh, based on the Microsoft uh, Learning Student Ambassador. Okay, so the good part about the Microsoft Learning Student Ambassador Program, you take it upon yourself as an individual on what learning path you're trying to choose for web development. There are plugins already that you can use on the program and then the also um, learning paths that you can learn from scratch if you're learning how to build a website from scratch and you can also use some certain templates for wordpress that are already there in the program you want to put right. your question okay yeah thanks okay, you're welcome you can see there are some more hands i don't know who's going first uh hello can you hear me yes we can hear uh, yeah, I was just asking, uh, knowing that uh, you are a web developer, is it possible that if you can uh, give us some links to the, to some webs that you have developed? Yeah, sure. No problem. I'll send them to you. Oh, okay. You. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay, you can still see some hands. Hezron and Jeremiah. And I already asked. Like, okay, already... your hand was still up. Hezron, are you still asking? No, my it was a contribution on the on that okay. question for getting templates for websites. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm also I'm also a developer. Mm -hmm. So looking at uh, when you are developing systems like for a client, like what Arina said, you find that situations where there is an error, for example, we do create, uh, as a developer, you need to create exceptions, right? Based on how you as a developer, you understand those exceptions. Mm -hmm. So, and then we've got exceptions, event handlers, and then in a situation where there is an error and then you as a developer because you're not the one who put out that code you won't even know where to go to in such an instance so the best to is to code your own code and understand the nature of your coding because each programmer has his or a different way of programming yeah yeah i agree with his run it all depends on what project you're working on, I would say. <laughs> okay, do we have any more questions, contributions? Okay, there's a hand. Hey Ali. Hey Jackson. And everyone. Yes, um, that's that's a contribution. Okay. Uh, considering that we are now winding up. Yes. So, 
Uh, I just wanted to ask everyone that is present to kindly just uh, follow us on, on the social media handle, the, the, our page, mm -hmm. our official page for Zambia. Mm -hmm. And also, if possible, you, you can share with others so at least we can have, you know, a huge uh, reach so that even others next time can still attend events like these so that they're equally helped as well. Um, yes, and also I'm sure there are a couple of other ambassadors within Zambia that will be, you know, holding their, their events very soon, I presume. And I, uh, I'm hoping the next ones will combine everyone else and maybe include people like Hezron that are already in the, in the system who already know and are exposed so that at least, you know, can help um, more people that way. Okay. Yeah, so I think that's that's my contribution. And thank you so much, Ali. It's it's been an awesome experience. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much for being part of the event. And uh, I've okay. shared the the link on the Facebook for the Facebook page in the chat. I don't know if people can see that. Can you guys get me? I um I have to friend you on Facebook. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Um, you uh, you can send me your name on uh, on um, on WhatsApp. Okay, no problem. I'll yeah. That. I tried to find you last time. There were many Elinas in your name, so then I said, ah. Maybe it's not this, or maybe the, and then I gave up. I understand. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's the end of our session. Thank you for everyone that spared the time to join this meeting. We really appreciate. And please do find time to apply for the Microsoft Student Ambassador Program so that we can learn as a community, as Zambians. <laughs> and just share more on these technologies on what's out there and we learn from each other. It's very important. Yeah, thank, right. you. thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, have a good day, everybody. Yeah, thank you for today. All right, okay, bye. Bye.